Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. It's the long-awaited Pandora Saga 3D. Yes, so many versions out there and this is the game system. Don't mind the game box that is on the box itself. I'm guessing they're just reusing these boxes. So what are we going to get if we are ordering the game system Pandora 3D games? So as you can see, everything is packed up very nice. We're getting HDMI cable comes with controllers and I must say there are different versions out there we have in the wireless versions and I ordered the one with the wire and the reason why is a little bit cheaper and I wanted to show you this version there's only a catch you have see we're having two controllers two USB connections and we're going to need the USB hub for connecting it to the main board it comes with a 12 volt 2000 milliamp adapter and here we have the on and off switch all right, here we have the manual itself. Let's see if this, the funny thing is this is not even the manual that, no, as you can see, this is just an, or it's just a basic manual because this thing is used for the Yamaha connection or the Yamaha edition and the family edition, but it's a basic explanation. And this is the main board itself. So this is more like a multi-purpose main board. You can use it in an arcade machine. You can use it like a game system. And that's the reason why they are selling it like this. They're a little bit naughty because what you're basically doing is you can see the connector over here. You are going to put the on and off switch in here so you can turn it on and off. You're not going to use this connection over here. We're going to use the connection at the back, but we're going to talk about it a little bit later. So we don't need the second controller. Let's talk about the Pandora box. All right, so the controller, the UCOM controller, these are the basic controls you're going to get with, um, yeah, let's say, the Orange Pie systems, the Pandora box is just a basic controller from China. All right, so they look like a PlayStation 2 controller, but don't get me wrong, they are nothing like the original PlayStation 2 controller. This one feels very cheap. You can already hear it. You don't have this with the original controller. You're not using any decals, you're just saying one, two, three, four. I want to say the one, two, three, four are very easy to configure it with the Pandora box. I'm guessing that's the reason why I'm using just numbers on this. All right, we have talked about the Pandora box or the power supply, but let's talk about the Pandora box itself. So what you can see over here, it says Pandora 3D Saga. It comes in this very basic black casing. Most of these Pandora boxes have more, or depends a little bit what kind of version you are buying. Uh, for example, the Pandora box five comes in the blue case, the six in the green, and so on and so on. So here at the back where you can see we're having two USB connections, but here is the catch. So if you're going to use two controls, you can't use both USB connection because the other one, I don't know exactly where it's for, but it doesn't recognize any signal from a controller whatsoever. So you're going to need the little USB hub for using it with basically two controllers. We're having setting good button for the people who don't know if you want to go into settings to adjust difficulty and other things. I'm going to show you in the video. That's what the little button is for. Volume control. We're having here the audio. Now, by the way, the volume control, I just needed to point out this thing is only used for when you're having an internal speaker. So it's not for adjusting the volume in general so far, I know. VGA output, so if you want to go old school with the VGA monitor. HDMI, of course, and we having here the input for the power supply. So this is what you're going to get. Pretty prehistoric, the way how they are giving you this, but it works, or I hope it is going to work. That's going to go to try out in this video. So stay tuned and let's connect it. All right, so let's set it up. What we're going to need is some power. So I'm having here the power. Hello, are you? Where are you? Oh, here we are. So here we have the adapter itself that goes in here that's it everything works like a charm it doesn't work because it didn't give this thing some power but as you can see we're powering on this little LED goes on I'm going to use one controller so I don't need the USB hub all right so I'm going to put the controller in here Oh, there's only one catch with the controller and that is a really little bit of a bummer. This system doesn't recognize every controller. So, so it's always a little bit of a search which controller will fit your personal need and work on the system. Still figuring out for finding a good controller that is working with all the Pandora boxes. So if you know what kind of controller you can use on a device like this, let me know in the comments. And we don't need to forget to put the HDMI connection in on the right position wicket. 
in the right position. Yeah. All right, so let's boot it up. We're going to get the Pandora 3 Serga intro. Uh, exactly the same like the previous model of the review, but nevertheless, let's see what we're going to get. And now it says U-Disk mounted because it is an SD that contains all the boot up files. All right, so let's take a little tour of the menu and explain how it works for all the people new to the Pandora 3D Saga. All right, so let's talk about the menu and how those work. Normally we're going to get a little preview over here. Here we have all games categorized, recent, what we recently play, and the search option. Going down, as you can see, every time I'm choosing a game, it gives you a little preview. Pressing up and down goes to the next game, and pressing left and right, we can go to the next page. Going back to the categorized system, we're having all games categorized by platform. Pressing up and down, same story, goes to the next game, but when pressing right or left, we can go to the other kind of games. So there are quite some different versions out there. For example, we're having Sega Dreamcast, MAME, Neo Geo, PSP, PlayStation 1, we're having N64, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, and yes I know, don't ask me why they still didn't change that out, they're using the Xbox 360 logo. So and even we're having some PC Engine. As I already told you, if you play the game, it shows up in this list. I must say they maxed it to one page, I'm guessing, so it doesn't remember every single game you've played. Going to the search option here, you can search very easily, very fast to, for your game. For example, I want to search for Mortal Kombat. I'm just messing it up here. You can go back. Mortal. Mortal, yes. And here we have the different versions. What I think is very convenient, as you can see, you can see the little decal over here. So that says which platform it supports. So for example, this is the Mortal Kombat game for, play, for PSP, PlayStation Portable. This one's for the main, and Mortal Kombat 2, 3, and 4 are for the PlayStation. And the David has the N64 version. It seems to be the final burn alpha, so I'm guessing they put the ultimate Mortal Kombat on it. We're going to try it out because the Mortal Kombat games are the ultimate test to check out if this thing is worth trying to play arcade games. All right, so let's talk about the settings menu. This is more of the same if it comes to the previous models. They did change some things out. So for example, we're having now the options to change the image optimization. And a lot of these boxes have the HD version, so it's more like a polished version. But we have the original pixelated version with an HD and scan lines. But sadly, there is no way to change the expats retro. You need to do this with your television, for example, with the settings, or just use an old school VGA monitor. All right, so that is what we are going to get with the settings. All right, we're going to do some gameplay testing and to show you how good are the games running on this device. <laughs> Oh, 
<笑>いざ尋常に一本目勝負Before we're going to wrap it up, I just wanted to say that you can quick load and quick save with most of the games. So when pressing the select button on your controller, you're going to get this linen menu. Here you can continue, exit the game, save and load. When you're saving it, it goes further with the game and you need to call the menu back for loading the state in. But keep in mind, you can only do one save state at a time at the game. Alright, so let's take a close look at the system itself and let's do a teardown, let's rip it apart and let's see what kind of power or what kind of specifications are we going to get because I'm very curious about that one. 
All right, so the first thing that I'm noticing that they are using a new generation cooling fan. The reason why I'm saying new generation, not only the color is different, but I did notice it's quite silent different <laughs> comparing with the previous model because I was like a freaking vacuum cleaner. All right here we have the SD slot as you can see over here and they glued it and I know why they are doing it because they are afraid that it's going to fall out because if this thing falls out you don't have any games it still boots up all right so let's take a close look at the layout because this is quite interesting here we have the AM Logic S812B that is a quad core CPU it's very common in the latest Pandora box mainboard but this is what I think is really interesting so as you can see we're having four chips over here that is something that is not very common but beside that point we're having two different types of chips and that is all very strange this I'm searching on it but I couldn't find any information and if you look at the layout and all the other things we're having the flash chip that contains let's say just the main firmware and that is most of the time just two or four gigabytes so in general the, the connections are also a little bit different with the models for example the pandora game 3d and this is because the main board itself are going to get used in let's say portable pandora boxes and other different arcade machines all right so let's put it back together this is what you're going to get with the little pandora main board i'm not a big fan of this let's say pad that you put on it for the cooling or the conductive part of the cooling i don't like it at all to be honest so all right let's put it back together and let's see what we're going to get with the games for example Hoppa. all right so the idea indeed behind it is that you're having this game system but it's more like an multifunctional because you can build this thing in your arcade machine you can use it like a game system like this so this is what you're going to get the emulation is not perfect for example with the Sega Dreamcast and the PSP and it runs a little bit choppy or it has some glitches so this is what you're going to get with the Pandora Saga 3D game system so if you pick it up like this this is just basically what you're going to get I think it's not bad at all so if you want to have a basic plug and play device it works it does the trick and the emulation is pretty decent and the new generation or this is what we call the new generation of pandora boxes has um, way more functionalities and not to forget we can play different games how to add games that is something that i'm still figuring out there are some tutorials but it is not easy and it is very choppy to do what well, i thank you for watching it would be great to have you here so subscribe to the channel would be great hit the little bell and give this video a thumb up and if you have any questions you can always leave it in the comments thanks and uh, see you in the next video.